I'm sorry that I'm not able to be with you in person tonight at this Symposium on Family and Human Rights to celebrate the life and work of Bridget Lindley. The news that Bridget had passed away came as a shock to me and I'm sure many of you. My thoughts and those of my officials who knew and worked with Bridget are with her husband Simon, their children Sam, Kate and Robin, as well as her mother Juliet, her sisters Antonia and Claire and her brother Charles and of course her colleagues. I had the pleasure of meeting Bridget on a number of occasions. And the last time we met was back in early November last year at a cross-government working group on kinship care. As usual, her passion for improving services for kinship carers was there for all to see. It came as no surprise to me to learn that less than two weeks before she passed away and on the same day she'd had hospital treatment, Bridget took herself to a meeting here in London where she wanted to and succeeded in influencing the development of good practice guidance on assessments for when family and friends carers are being considered as potential special guardians. And this tells us all something of her drive, her energy, her commitment to the work she did as a family rights group member. As part of her work with the Department for Education and as a recognised expert, Bridget developed accreditation for running family group conferences. She also advised us here in government on getting all councils to publish their family and friends policies. Hers is a significant achievement for the family rights group, for kinship carers, for the parents they support when children are in care or at risk of being taken into care. Through her work with the family rights group and before that as a solicitor, Bridget advised thousands of families and influenced policy, legislation and practice. She made a real and lasting difference, enabled many more vulnerable children to live safely with their families. Indeed, I know firsthand how much Bridget relished the challenge of lobbying politicians like me, policy makers and judges on behalf of vulnerable families. So it was fitting that Bridget's work was recognised in 2014 when she was awarded an OBE for services to families. And I speak not just for myself, but for everyone here at the DfE who work with Bridget when I say that we shall miss her knowledge and expertise so willingly and graciously shared with all. I'm struck by the things we discover about a person after they're gone. As well as her passion for family rights, Bridget found time to serve as a trustee of Amnesty International UK. She also liked to dance very well, I believe, and even became a music DJ. I didn't know that, but glad that I now do. Tonight's symposium, in aid of the Bridget Lindley Memorial Fund, is truly a fitting tribute to honour Bridget's memory and all that she achieved. Bridget's presence and energy will be missed by many. But tonight, through your tributes and the live music from Jules Holland, it's a time to celebrate all that Bridget did for so many. And through the money raised this evening, you can help carry forward the inspirational legacy Bridget passes on to us all. So can I simply end by saying, Bridget, thank you.